Hey everybody, it's Manga Mike here, and I'm back with another video on six reasons why you should concentrate on themes in your manga. Let's get started. Alright everybody, before we get started on all the points, I kind of want to define what a theme is, at least in my own language. So a theme is an ideology that is kind of pushed into your story, right? So your story has an underlying theme, meaning that your underlying theme could be something along the lines of good guys come last, right? Or it could be something like uh, it's just coming of age, right? Something like that is a theme within your story. Um, another theme, and we'll talk about this in depth, and this is the example I'll be using for this particular video, is through Vash the Stampede in um, Trigun, right? He has a, there's like an underlying theme of pacifism, and it's pacifism in this world of absolute violence and chaos, right? People are just killing each other right and left. So Vash the Stampede is a perfect character, at least in my opinion, as far as pushing an ideology and a theme, right? And there's a lot of good aspects to this, and we're going to get to that in just a second. So number one, um, good themes can create flawed protagonists, right? So in this particular circumstance, we have, um, I have like a little bit of a comparison between Vash's Stampede and Superman. So Superman, I would say, I would actually argue there's not really too much of a theme for Superman, especially the earlier Superman comics. Really, Superman was just a little bit of a comic to help people like kind of get away from the awful world that was the world when Superman first came out, right? And really, his only flaw is the fact that Kryptonite can hurt him, right? Other than that, he's like kind of perfect. Um, you know, nothing can really harm him. And I would argue that having a, a character that's super perfect like that is just so boring. I find Superman to be an extremely boring character. I know he's like supremely popular, but he isn't just in my eyes very, very boring. Where we have Vash's Stampede, right? So again, I kind of already said his theme of pacifism, but he sticks to that theme and that ideology so much that it actually creates a flaw for him, right? He's unable to kind of be moved from that, that particular mindset. And what that does is, is it creates these situations in which his flaws are showing. He's kind of sacrificing too much for what he sees as the greater good. And that's an important kind of distinction to have within your own characters in your comics. So number two, themes are a great way to develop a great complementary supporting cast of characters. What do I mean by that? So let's take Wolfwood for an example. Um, and I'm going to just say this right now, spoilers are ahead. So please uh, make sure that, <laughs> and maybe not in this point, but in later points, there will be spoilers. So make sure if you haven't seen Trigun and you plan on seeing it, don't watch all of this video. Uh, you can maybe fast forward a little bit. So Wolfwood is a character that he teams up with Vash, but he's also slightly in opposition of Vash, right? His ideologies are kind of that, um, and I'll actually skip ahead, his ideologies are kind of these two, right? If the majority can be saved by the death of a lesser amount, then so be it. And then also, we're not God. Not only are our powers limited, but we sometimes are driven to uh, become the devil himself. Those two things are very important, right? And the first one that he's talking about is in direct opposition to pacifism, which is the trolley dilemma, right? So the trolley dilemma is if they're, and there's a whole bunch of different dilemmas with the trolleys, but I'll just stick to like one of the first ones. If your train is going downhill without brakes and you either uh, flip a switch to kill one person or you keep going downhill to kill five, Nine times out of ten, everybody would pick the one person to kill and save the five, right? Um, Vash can't really think that way. He's not able to make that kind of decision. Those decisions kind of break him, right? And this actually leads to my uh, second point, where this creates situations in which characters have great stakes, right? So, for instance, this particular um, episode and this particular scene with Legato... 
um, is extremely important. And I think it's actually, for me at least, it's actually the most important scene in the entire anime. Um, Legato is this character that thrives with chaos, and he kind of thrives on um, controlling and manipulating people. But in this particular circumstance, he's also trying to thrive and making Vash make a decision that's going to scar him even more than all those scars you saw on the second page, right? It's an emotional scar that he might not ever be able to heal from, and that is Legato's plan, right? That's what he wants. He wants to break Vash. And I find these two pictures in particular to be so powerful because the... um kind of the artwork behind it is that Legato is kind of above Vash and you would think like, okay, Legato has all the power in the circumstance and Vash has none. But really it's the opposite. Vash still has the power in this circumstance because he can still choose not to kill Legato, right? But instead, we get this switch because in the background, as you see this mob, they're actually trying to harm the insurance ladies that uh, Vash has become very keen to, right? Um, so now we have this flip-flop, right? I would argue that, yes, Vash has the power, at least from sight in this particular scene, but in reality, he doesn't have any more power. He's losing his power to this person that he's actually uh, towering over, right? Because Legato doesn't want to live. He doesn't care about living. He wants to harm Vash as much as possible, and he knows that uh, making Vash kind of infringe on his own, own ideologies is what's really going to break him, and he's right. Vash actually kills Legato in this scene, but Legato dies with a smile on his face knowing that he's kind of screwed Vash over. And that is what I'm talking about with great stakes, right? To me, it wasn't even that big of a deal that Vash, Vash's angel arm came out. Like, I didn't want him to, to harm anyone or anything, but um, to me, it was more more so is he actually going to fold and kill this person right and i would argue that even though vash ended up living in this particular scene vash is the one that actually loses this confrontation and that's what i mean by great stakes like you don't get that without ideology behind it right and that leads me again to my next point you get scenes of action that just supplement ideology that has to uh, that's occurring within your story, right? And this is how you make a very compelling and emotionally driven action scene as well. So if you have if you have this circumstance in which you're just having action for the sake of action, and the example I like to use for this is actually um, Goku when he fights Nappa versus when he fights Vegeta, right? Nappa was just a showcase of Goku's new abilities, right? He's able to single-handedly destroy this opponent, the opponent that killed basically all the Z fighters before Goku arrived with no sweat really, right? Um, but that you don't really think about that fight very much when you look back on Dragon Ball, right? The fight that you're more likely to think about is actually the fight with Goku and Vegeta. And I think that this particular fight also kind of shows that, right? There's so much more going into this fight than the fact that um, Yusuke has to beat Takoro to live, basically, right? It's more than that. And that's because um, uh, of Yusuke's master, right? Um, Genkai. So Genkai and Tagoro have this huge background, and there's this split because a demon destroyed um, and killed all of their pupils, right? And so they decide to enter the dark tournament and uh, Genkai is trying to warn Tagoro like don't let rage overcome you and control you because that's what they want, right? And it in fact does. Tagoro um, wins the dark tournament and once he wins he decides that he wants to have uh, a demon-esque body so that he can um, grow more powerful, right? And hopefully uh, kill the demon that killed his pupils. And he ends up kind of sacrificing his own humanity in an effort to go after revenge. And Genkai does the exact opposite. And that's actually what's happening in this particular fight. And it's really important because this particular fight, it feels to me at least, like the most important fight of the entire series. One, because of the buildup, but two, because of these uh, these um, kind of combating ideologies that are happening as we see them, right? This is, uh, this is Genkai's um, star pupil, and she sees him as a son, and she says so herself, right? And... 
you see what love and compassion can foster, which is this very strong, very capable boy. And it also fosters something even more than that, which is love. So you basically have these two competing ideologies of like love and revenge, and you see that love wins out. And that's that's what I mean by your theme can kind of push an ideology that that is kind of the star of your action. You don't want your action to be the star of the action, right? You want the ideology to be because that makes for a more compelling story. Um, in this last piece, you have, or sorry, second to last piece, you have this ideology also, or not ideology, I keep using that word, <laughs> but you have this idea of fulfilling uh, changes or non-changes, right? And both of them can be fulfilling. So we have this situation in which Knives and Vash, going back to Trigun, have competing themes, right, or ideologies. Uh, Knives feels that humankind is just trying to use them because Vash and Knives are both what they call plants and they're just trying to use them to kind of survive, right? So he feels that humans aren't worth saving because they're just, they're just basically sucking up all resources possible. Whereas Vash feels that they're people and they're, um, him and Knives, just because they're a different race of seemingly superior human, or sorry, superior beings, um, he doesn't feel that they are more important than humans. And he also feels that humans do have the capacity to learn and to grow, right? Um, and you get this situation in which Vash's ideology doesn't really change. He actually leans more into it, right? Because along the way, Vash was able to make friends with humans. And that's where his real strength was. So you get this last scene in which Vash basically has Wolfwood talking to him from the dead or at the very least in the back of his own head. And um, it's a reminder that Wolfwood's cross weapon is sitting right next to him. And without this weapon, Vash would have surely died. But instead, he takes the upper hand on knives in this particular circumstance. And again, going back to the last point, the ideology of caring, love, compassion, pacifism, overcomes this ideology of just bitterness and not trusting and not making friends with humans unless it benefits yourself, right? So we get that kind of um, fulfilling change or non-change within a story and you see that the fulfillment comes from the fact that ideologies prevail over other ideologies, right? So that's extremely important to take, uh, to take in. Um, and then finally, when you implement a theme that's meaningful to you, that's really what all this is about, right? Like you don't want to make a manga just to make it to see if it's going to become popular, right? That's not what we do as creators. We're making a manga or a comic because it's something that we enjoy doing, right? And it's something that is meaningful to us. So for instance, for me, I'm currently working on a story about how impactful it is being mixed race and how hard it can be at times dealing with the um, kind of the separation of two different cultures. Sorry, Max is in the background just like clawing away like a cat. It's amazing. <laughs> but you kind of get pushed and pulled between these two different cultures and you have difficulties feeling like where you fit in at, right? And that's something that I'm working on in my current comic and I would like to be able to push that theme in a way that's meaningful, right? And I use Cowboy Bebop as an example. I absolutely love this anime and it's because you have these four characters with these like kind of traumatic pasts and backstories kind of coming together and overcoming that or not overcoming it in some cases. And that's really important to see and it's it's very impactful for me and I felt like this is a very meaningful um, anime uh, for me at least. So anyways, um, that's kind of all six of the points um, and that's six ways theme can push your manga. And I really, really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that it was important for you um, or to you and it felt impactful for you. Um, really, really want to thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I really want to thank you all for supporting my channel. If you can, leave a like, please. It really helps out a lot. And if you have any comments, comment below. Uh, what things do you think I got right? What things do you think I got wrong? Again, I'm still learning all this as well. And finally, if you haven't, please think about subscribing. It would mean a lot to me. I'm trying to get to 1K before the end of the year. That's my big goal. But anyways, I really hope that you all have a great blessed day. I'm Manga Mike, and I'm out.